In today's episode, we finally leave Gary's anchorage at Kagari and wind our way through the narrow channels of the Great Sandy Straits to Big Woody Island for a catch up with friends. Our early start next morning goes awry when the engine won't start, but eventually we're underway across Harvey Bay to the Burnett River and a stop in the Bundaberg Port Marina. And if you love seafood, we've got great news for you. up anchoring and we are heading north though today we don't have wind so we'll be motoring most of the way but at least we don't have strong northerlies right on the nose and we will be able to motor we're just going a little further up um, Fraser Island probably to <laughs> we're trying to still decide but we think that we'll be going through to the resort and yeah, if we do, we'll be hatching up with some lovely friends who are up there. They've come through from the north, so we're actually meeting friends along the way, not quite passing ships in the dark. Rob's up getting the anchor, as usual. It's a tad hot this morning. Beautiful, though. Our beautiful clean decks from the rain last night did now covered in mud. Yeah, get that. She's turning a bit to get out of this mud. <laughs> I think Rob's also doing it nice and slow so that he can get most of the mud off before it comes on deck and into anchor locker. Last thing you want is smelling mud in your anchor locker. Look, pull the bow down. Feel that wall. That was the anchor coming out of that sticky mud. It's been a lovely stay at Gary's. Every time we come to Gary's, it seems that Gary's anchorage grabs hold of us and keeps us for over a week. The reason that we do go into Gary's quite a lot is because it is so sheltered and that we get great crab here. So we really enjoy the anchorage to do recreational fishing and crabbing as well as hiding out from weather. So it's the best of both worlds really. There's some lovely walks on the island and you know this time around we just enjoy spending some time together on board as well. We got a lot of editing done and I was able to take classes, I study at high tide. Low tide, I wasn't getting any signal. <laughs> the joys of living on board. The Great Sandy Straits are a labyrinth of sandbars and narrow winding channels that can be a bit daunting to those venturing through for the first time, but they are easily navigable with the right timing. The tide flows into the straits from both the north and the south, meeting in the middle. So whichever direction you're traveling, the aim is to time your passage to ride that incoming tide so that you arrive at the shallowest point around Sheridan Flats on the high. Then you can also ride the outgoing flow out the other side. Zoom, zoom. It doesn't matter if you're not exact, but this is the general rule of thumb that will ensure plenty of water depth and avoid strong adverse currents. As everybody has the same plan, you'll often come across a bit of traffic, but that's just an indication that you got your timing right. 
This is the actual pinch point of the Sheridan Flats where we do our major turn. Off to starboard is a sandbank during low tide. And there's that yacht coming uh, south that's just turning the mark. We'll be doing likewise very shortly. Karen on the helm, taking the turn nice and tight to the buoy and keeping us in the channel. And we head that way back up towards Yankees Anchorage and the, uh, the coastline of Kagari again. And that'll be a turn to port and run along the coast. We were going to go to um, Kingfisher Bay today, but our friends Russell and Glenis are up there on their, their catamaran lionfish safari and uh, they were at Kingfisher Bay and they moved up to the southwest corner of Big Woody Island for better protection last night. So we've said that sounds good to us and we're going to meet them up there. The good news about that is it's a little bit closer to, uh, to Burnett Heads for our trip tomorrow, so that'll shorten that one down. We just set up our uh, spot tracker to let uh, people on our Dreamtime Sale Patreon uh, Facebook group know that we're underway and where we are. It's a little busy in the Great Sandy Straits today. Everybody going south. And yeah, we're gonna get a little bit of wake from this boy. And that was only a fraction of his potential speed, so he was actually still being considerate. With the anchor down, we had a great afternoon catching up with ex-work colleague Russell and his wife Glenis on their cat lionfish safari. That was all before getting a good night's sleep ahead of an early start next morning. We've got great news for everyone who loves seafood. Karen's new ebook, Hook, Line and Sinker, is now available. This bright and colourful cookbook takes you on a journey around the world of seafood. It features 10 chapters with over 50 recipes, including flavour profiles from Asia, the Middle East, Mediterranean and Australia. If you like to shake things up in the galley, this cookbook's for you. Recipe highlights include crab pot pie, seafood paella, saganaki fish with feta and fennel, and Sri Lankan fish curry. Not only are there great recipes, but Karen shares her tips on how to catch, clean and cook a range of seafood. The book is filled with the flavours of the world, all enhanced by beautiful watercolours. Hook, Line and Sinker is available along with Karen's two other e-books. You can find full details on them all at our PayHip page. There's links on screen and in the comments below. Well, good morning. It's another one of those early starts today. Uh, got up at 4. It's now about 4.30. The sun isn't up, but it's on its way. We've got about 40 miles to do to uh, the Port of Bundaberg in the Burnett River, just at Burnett Heads today. And the forecast is for light southerly winds, and then it's going to go uh, northeast in the afternoon. So we want to make as many miles as we can before that northeasterly starts. So hence the anchor's going to come up shortly. Karen's below uh, securing things at the moment and uh, sipping down her cup of tea for the morning. And uh, I'm just going to head up and put a halyard on the mainsail, etc., and just get uh, everything on deck ready.
New start battery in Bundaberg, yep. start to the morning. It is a beautiful morning however on our dream time. We are looking at a new start battery obviously um, when we get to Bundaberg. Just a couple of other things we have to do when we get to Bundaberg but never mind. We are started and um, our house battery bank is reasonably new and um, yeah <laughs> off we go. Oh. Wow, the sunset is worth it. Welcome to Bundaberg everybody. We are going to make hopefully a quick stop here just to get those repairs done that we actually need. So we won't be going up the river like we have in the past and enjoyed the city. You can actually check out those YouTubes. We'll put the link below so you can see what a beautiful city Bundaberg is and all the stuff that you can actually do here. There's heaps to do. Um, Mon Repo is one of my favorites where the turtles come up to lay their eggs and then the hatchlings of course, they're just stunning. But yes, we are going into the marina tomorrow. We are anchored off the marina and outside the shipping channel at the moment just because the tidal run here is just terrible. They don't have a berth for us until tomorrow anyway and we won't be going in until slack tide. We've even had trouble anchoring here because the wind and tide are totally different and they're just not cooperating. So, but anyway, we're anchored. We're um, nice, and, nice and dug in so we can see the marina just across from us and we'll look forward to going in there but not looking forward to having to do the repairs that we've got but that's living on a boat. Our Dreamtime has a full long keel so she doesn't spin on her axis like a modern fin keel boat. This makes manoeuvring in a marina always a little bit stressful 
especially in one like the uh, Bundaberg Port Marina, which has a tidal flow in the river. Get the bell on. Now that we're in the marina, the fun begins with the boat jobs. First up, get the leaking water maker cylinders away for repair. Then find where the water is coming from that is setting off our bilge pump. The outboard wouldn't start at Big Woody Island, so we'll have to get to the bottom of that. The engine start battery hasn't been holding charge, so it's got to go. And while we're in the marina, of course, we'll naturally get all the washing done and top up our fresh veggie supplies, etc. So we've certainly discovered the uh, water leak that's been filling our uh, bilge. Oh shit! It's part of the engine cooling, the salt water part of the engine cooling. We replaced the uh, raw water pump before we left Brisbane. Everything was sweet when we left, but this uh, heat exchanger has sprung a leak. Fortunately we do carry a spare so the job now is to delve into the spares locker and uh, dig it out and that's another job for us to do here in Bundaberg Port Marina. But that explains why the uh, bilge has been going off quite regularly. Once again it's not something that we could have predicted just uh, first decent engine runs on the boat for nearly two years and any weak point is now appearing. Okay this is what we're talking about. It's a uh, the heat exchanger and the one on the engine's developed a pinhole here and it's been leaking away. Uh, we heard the bilge going off a bit and I went chasing what the source of the water was. That turns out it. Things are still dribbling there, it's just water coming down from the other parts of the engine. Um, the seacock is turned off so there's no more salt water coming into the boat, that's eventually going to stop. In the meantime I've got to disconnect the hoses and uh, just replace that. This is uh, an item that we do carry two spares of. This is going on, so we'll still have one more spare, fortunately. Cruising is repairing a boat in exotic locations, and this one is the Bundaberg Port Marina, where we've got good, uh, good services around us as well if we need any help, so that's very, very fortunate. But I have to tell you, it's damn warm. How warm? Damned warm. 
Join us in the next episode when the boat jobs continue and we discover some of Bundaberg's more hidden gems as recommended by one of our fantastic Patreon virtual crew members. His local knowledge proves to be gold. We would like to say a huge thank you to our virtual crew members who sail along with us on our Dreamtime through Patreon. Knowing you think enough of what we do to sign on gives us a massive boost. Your support has encouraged and helped us to invest in a whole bunch of new equipment to improve our shows. If you'd like to find out how you could join the Dreamtime crew too and get special access and other benefits, click across to our Patreon page through the link in the episode description below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please click that button. It really helps us, and it's totally free. If you'd like to be notified when new episodes are published, hit that bell button as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll look forward to you joining us on the next episode of Dreamtime Sale.